Hello YouTube, Pilot Wannabe here. We're here on the ground in uh, Nuke, Greenland. And uh, we're going to do a ferry flight. A ferry flight from Nuke to Reykjavik. And uh, the purpose of this flight is to demonstrate the capabilities of the GTN 750. Um, haven't done much of uh, any flight planning at all. Um, I'm trying to recreate a flight done by fellow simmer on YouTube, Peter Mathis, who did an interesting one with the um, the A2A Comanche 250, the new aircraft recently released. I don't have that aircraft and I won't be having it for a while, so I'm going to take the Duke version 2 out and it should prove to be a much higher, much faster flight, but um, with the same GTN 750, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to do it uh, smoothly, and it should be a good test of its capabilities, considering not much uh, flight planning has been done. Okay, I've taken the... Um, it's a historical flight. I've tried to sync it up with the same time and weather that he did, to the best of my knowledge. And with that being said, we are going to give her a go. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to fire up the Duke. Okay, so... And also, I'm going to try to fly this by the numbers as uh, best as I can, all proper procedures, without ATC, though. All right, so I believe it's already partially powered up. Parking brake is set and batteries are on. Okay, so we're going to put the ignition on, fuel pumps on, and engage the starter. Oh, but before we do that, we put uh, navs and strobe, not navs and strobes, navs and beacon light on. Okay. There we go. Coming up, 12%. And there it is. And it's... Oh, it's not a hot start. Which is good. I hate when that happens. Alright, and it is stabilizing. So, ignition to auto. We're going to test the generator. And it is producing, so generator off. Um, ignition number one to on fuel pump on and gauge that starter waiting for 12 percent there it is monitoring the engine all limits uh, staying in the green Okay, ignition to auto, generator 1 on, generator 2 on, and they are producing power. Okay, I'm going to open the uh, oil doors halfway. Now this plane can climb very nicely, so we are going to bring up the uh, climb rate to 3,000 feet a minute and hopefully keep the uh, speed above uh, 140 indicated. inverter was on and the master avionics is on okay so we're going to set initial altitude of uh, 5,000 feet arm it and vertical speed of 3,000 Right. Here comes Garmin, and I'm going to put on the uh, pedo heat, so that will be ready to go. Now, as in the V2, it has uh, click spots for your viewing. I don't have easy docks, so I'm going to set that up with the proper zoom in on the view.
Okay, now to enter the flake plan. And uh, System test okay. first uh, waypoint is GH. Gulf Hotel. And we're take the one in Nook, Greenland. Nope, that's not it. And then we're going to add way, not a waypoint, load the airway, UT-599. And we are going to exit it on uh, Lodno. And we're going to load that. Then we're going to load airway uh, UT-594. And it is the only one. And we're going to exit that at Gimli. We're going to load that. Then we're going to go direct to Kilo Echo Foxtrot in Iceland, not Greece. And then finally. We're going to add uh, Reykjavik, Bravo, India, Romeo, Kilo. And let's see how that looks. And I like it. Now the other thing is we're not going to fly all the way to uh, GH and come back. So we're going to set the next point has the active waypoint, the active leg. And then we will meet up with that sh shortly after takeoff. Alright, so it looks like the wind is favoring runway 23. So that's what we are going to go with. Runway 23. runway heading there two three okay so what is left to do now I think we are pretty much ready to go so this Duke is pretty new to me still 8.6 hours on it and uh, let me check our trims they look fine. Uh, fuels are on the proper tanks. Should have checked that first. Okay, and we'll be flying east IFR. So we'll be flying at uh, odd flight level. And ultimately, we'll be going for 25,000 feet. Okay, so here we go. Parking brake off. We're going to get her moving by moving the uh, condition lever to full temporarily and back to low idle. Center line, we're going to rotate at about 90. There's 80 knots, there's 90, putting in a little back pressure. There we go, positive rate, gear up, 
flaps up. We're at 3,000 feet per minute already. Okay. We're going to try and hold that. We're going to pull the power back to 2,000 RPM. We're at 4,000 feet per minute there. Okay, and the engine is over speeding. So we're going to pull that back to uh, hopefully about the 90% range. About 1,000 uh, foot pounds of torque. And we're going to gauge the autopilot and the yaw dampener in heading mode. Take a peek outside. Not much to see because we have left Nook. And we're going to start turning on course. seem right with our flight plan here. We're going way too fast. Because we're at 5,000 feet already, so we're going to dial her up to 25,000 feet. See how long we can hold that. Now let's go outside and take a look while everything's still cool. Engine parameters are okay. cooling good okay so after after takeoff landing gear up and flaps are up that is done in the climb engine is set props are set okay let's go ahead and put the synchronizer on I hardly ever use those uh, engine doors are open oil doors are open monitor instruments cabin pressure check let's do that Okay, our differential is okay, and the cabin's climbing at 500 feet a minute. Let's dial that up to uh, about 750. Okay. Based on our present position to 
Reykjavik. We have 204 gallons on board, fuel flow 65.6 gallons per hour. With our ground speed, we're going to require 174 gallons, and we're going to have 29 remaining when we get to uh, Burke, which will give us a reserve of 26 minutes with endurance of 3 hours and 6 minutes. So even though we took off with 75% fuel, we're going to be off, we're going to be fine. And we haven't even begun to uh, pull back. When I say pull back, I mean we're at 2,000 RPM. I'm going to try to take her to the um, the bottom of the green arc, right about there. So I'm pulling back the power, pulling back, the, not the power, I'm pulling back the prop. seems that with the engine turning slower, we should be consuming less fuel. Okay, so we are now at 1830, bottom of the green arc. And our fuel flow is now 21.9 gallons a side. And our speed is climbing, so let's pull almost at red line. So let's pull her back to the torque is at uh, at least a thousand. Okay. And our speed is dropping slightly. Alright, I think that's a good speed if we want to get there quick. And we're still at 21.9 gallons a side on the fuel flow. Let's go back to the fuel planning and see what that does for us. It has increased our reserves at Reykjavik by about 30 minutes. We now have uh, 54 minutes, 53 minutes of reserves once we get there. And we're dropping from needing 170 some gallons to 152. Okay, our speed has come down but not that much. Okay, and our ground speed has dropped about 10 knots. Okay, I'm, um, our speed is coming down some more. We're about 190 indicated. All right, let's grab our uh, temperature. And it's about minus 30 up here. Okay, so minus 30 at 25,000 feet. Okay, so this is the 25,000 foot line. And that, oh, if I read it incorrectly, that's plus 30. <laughs> okay, so there's minus 10, minus 20 and minus 30. And it says that we should be doing about uh, between 265 and 270 knots. And that's about what we're reading for ground speed. Okay. So our true airspeed is about 265. And I am very fine with that. So our engines, we're in the green. Torque, ITT, and N1, and uh, tops bottom of the green arc, I've been reading this gauging correctly, this is fuel pressure, it's a fuel flow, 28.2 aside, 28 gallons aside. Quite often that's at uh, 33, 35, so I think I've uh, leaned her out pretty good. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. Uh, utilities, trip planning. 
Burke. We have 719 nautical miles to go. And estimated time on route, 2 hours 43 minutes. And we should arrive at uh, 2206 local time. go to VCALC and I think we want to set our profile for uh, CAF. Yeah. So CAF with no offset and let's say a thousand feet per minute. down to 4,000 feet. And that means we can start descent. Two hours, 19 minutes. Okay, so we're going to have a display message for us on that. Okay. All right, one more thing. We are in the cruise, so we do not need the oil doors open anymore. And actually, that should bring up our speed a couple knots. Let's see if that is in fact what happens. Well, not yet. Okay. Let's look out the window to take the time to have a peek. There is nobody out here with us. Nobody. Then again, we're over Greenland. Expect that. <laughs> Alright, so it would appear that all is well with our aircraft. And uh, we're going to go outside. Take a look, and there is not much to see. Not much to see at all. Alright. Well, I shall see you in about two hours when it's time for... Uh, when we're at top of descent, just before top of descent. All right, we'll see you on the other side. Okay, and we are back on our way to Reykjavik in Iceland. And uh, we're approaching top of descent, should be less than two minutes away. And we're still too far out to pick up the Reykjavik uh, ATIS, so we don't know what the appropriate landing is, uh, runway will be. I could look it up on um, uh, Active Sky next, but I want to do this mostly in the sim. Alright, and uh, I was able to look up that um, Reykjavik is only 45 feet above sea level. I guess its elevation is 45 feet. So, uh, we will keep that in mind when landing. Alright, so, we're ready to begin our descent. Okay, so, we're going to dial in 4,000 feet. First of all, let's, uh, let's keep our descent only at 1,000. Let's back off the power considerably. And uh, let's keep on down to 4,000 here. Okay. So we're descending smoothly. Our speed is dropping, but I don't want it to drop too much. So we're going to feed back in some power. back in a little bit more.
approaching 18,000 feet. And we still don't know what uh, conditions are. So I'm going to go to uh, Active Sky and see if it will tell us. that over here so we can read it better. Okay, winds are at 270 at 7 knots. Broken skies at 2500. And Q&H is uh, 1021. So let's uh, dial that now. 1022 And um, okay, so the weather is favoring is uh well, it's from the west at two seven zero. So with that being said, let's go into procedures. And there's no arrivals. So we'll go to approach. And uh, looks like our nav 3-1 is our best bet. Okay, so we're going to take that. And I am not familiar with the vectors. So. see what that does for us. No. Looks like the Litla vector is best for us. Okay, so we're going to load that approach. And go to the map and see how that looks. And we can't see it, so let's pop it out and drag ourselves over there. Okay, so we're going to want to make for Litla and come around for our landing on runway 31. So to do that properly, we are going to need to um, amend our flight plan. We are going to remove Burke. Now we shall have a look, and once we get to Kef, we're going to make for Litla, and uh, then we'll arm our approach. Alright, so I think we are looking very good indeed for our approach into Reykjavik. Okay, and our speed is getting away as the air thickens up, so backing off the power plane is starting to shake apart. It's not liking us. So programming our uh, our approach, the speed has crept up and gotten out of control somewhat. Okay, we're back in the green arc. And everything else looks good. So let's go to our descent checklist once again. Pressurization is set, altimeter is set, windshield anti-ice not required at this time, and power, we can feed in a bit more power, keep our speed up. All right, we're doing good. Let's see how, uh, how far out we are arrival-wise. So to Burke, we have 18 minutes before we land. Okay. All right, so everything should be fine for a while, 
and uh, at this point I'm going to cut it here and I will uh, join you shortly before the KEF VOR Kilo Echo Foxtrot alright so I shall join you shortly Okay, and uh, welcome back. We're on our way to uh, Reykjavik, and there it is, dead ahead. And we are inbound for runway 31, RNAV approach. And moments ago, uh, got a low fuel warning, because we are now down to 25 gallons in, uh, in the right tank. So, uh, we're going to clear that warning. And also, we did pick up, uh, not so long ago, Adis. Okay, so we've confirmed our uh, altimeter setting and runway 31, and uh, everything is looking golden. We are two minutes away from uh, KEF VOR, and then we will be inbound for the LITLA transition on the um, RNAV 31 approach. Okay, looks like we're turning into uh, inbound for Litla. Okay, so because we've done that, I'm going to uh, activate the approach and it should fly us directly to Litla, fly the approach. And we are at 4,000 as expected. Okay, and our speed is 180 and we're going to let that come down gradually. And there are clouds ahead. Let's check our temperature. It's uh, less than 10 degrees centigrade, so we're going to put on some ice protection. Not going to take any chances here. Still got a ways to go for uh, Litla. 23, 24 miles to go. And then we'll begin to turn inbound for our RNAV 3 1 approach. Alright, let's go to our uh, checklist. checklist before landing pressur pressurization differential should be zero and whoop, what is it cabin is at zero and differential is at two all right let's turn this down weird. I would think that the differential would be zero. The inner marker is the uh, differential and the outer is the cabin altitude. So cabin altitude is already at zero. So we look at that way. Before landing pressurization, pressurization differential zero. Prop sink off. Let's do that now. Flaps we can go to uh, first notch of flaps under 174, which we're approaching now. And then landing gear can go down at the same time. 
lights as required. Alright, initial approach should be at 120. Okay, so we are in the soup. Well, not really, but still can see very much at times. Okay, we're gonna wait till we close the distance much more on uh, Litla before uh, we slow down to approach speed, drop flaps. shortcut it a little bit. Once we get out here, we're going to turn inbound for approximately here, and then we will uh, manually activate the uh, fi vectors to final. And as long as we do that before the uh, final approach fix, which is RKF-131, RKF-31. RKF 31 is right here. So that's our final approach fix. So we're going to aim for somewhere in between. And uh, then we should intercept the uh, glide slope nicely. Okay, everything's still fine. We have a ground speed indicated of uh, just over 170. We're level at 4,000. All indications are in the green. Everything is looking good. Except for these dark clouds. So let's see should uh, aim for on the heading. We should aim for about 60 degrees. Okay, so let's tune in 60 degrees and go into heading mode. In turning. We will assume that we've been cleared to do this by uh, ATC because there's not much else going on. And just to double check that, we'll go to traffic. We do have a little something. 900 feet below us. At what range? 12 miles, so, and diverging, so, be no impact for us. Let's make sure we have a terrain on here, and we do. So, ground, it's not a factor for us. So even though we did very little flight planning, the GTN is uh, serving us well. Even though it doesn't have worldwide charts. But it does have uh, the nav aids and procedures. Okay. Just for the heck of it, let's go and activate a different leg of the flight plan. So we're going to begin to turn some more.
and it's starting to come in. So this is what we're going to do. The needle is uh, starting to come in. So we will go to our approach and we will activate the approach. Nope, that's not what we're going to do. Didn't mean to do that. Activate vectors to final. That's what I want to do. And then we'll go into nav mode. And it should begin to turn us inbound. And it is. And we have glide slope needles. Alright. So we're overshooting our path, but we're far enough out, it shouldn't be a problem. Once we firmed up on the uh, on the final approach path, we will uh, arm the approach. It looks like we should be doing that now. Let's do that now. And we are descending. Alright, so let's get our speed back. We want to get it below 170 so we can drop flaps and gear. Okay, I've got the uh, power levers all the way back presently. And we just went below 170, so gear down. First notch of flaps down. We're going to feed back in some power. We want to stabilize at about 120. Okay. Gum check. Gas is on both tanks. Undercarriage is down, three green. Props full. And uh, props are full. And well, there's no mixture in this one. It's a condition lever. And we can leave it at low idle for almost the entire flight. That's pretty much used just for ground operations. Okay, as I set my view here. Oh, look at the buildings we're coming in over. How nice. Okay. Five hundred. Okay, we're at a hundred knots. We can take the power off a little bit. Going manual. Uh, take the yaw dampener off too so I have some rudder authority. So we just cleared that building. That's being bleed off. way up here? It doesn't appear to be. Okay. So we're going to backtrack. Take the next exit to the left. Okay, and welcome to Reykjavik, Iceland. So here we are, get flaps up. 
gone to ground on the transponder. Uh, landing lights off. And uh, where should we make our way to? I think over yonder. All right. So let's bring up the condition levers to high idle. That should get us going. check our parking. Not bad indeed. Okay, here we are. I think it's time to shut her down. Okay, half lights can go off, taxi lights can go off, and there is a shutdown procedure. Might as well use that. Okay, parking brake is set. GPS is off. Avionics and inverter master switch is off. Uh, cabin temp mode off. Batteries are charged. I thought that should say 28. But I assume they're charged. ITT below 650, and it is. Ignition switch is off. And starter gen switch is off. Yep, left and right gen and off. Conditions, levers to cut off, and props to feather. Wait till NG is below 10%, and then uh, fuel pumps are off. Okay, there's 10%. Fuel pumps are off. DC volt check. Oh, there it is. Is there 28 amps? Or volts, I believe. And uh, battery off. And controls locked. Okay. That is it. Let's open her up. And once again, welcome to Reykjavik. And thank you for flying with Pilot Wannabe on this uh, ferry flight inspired by Peter Mathis. I have a link in the description to his uh, his flight below. Check it out if you, if you like. Alright, thanks again for joining me on this flight and uh, we'll see you next time. Pilot Wannabe, out! <laughs>